Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of KMRD Radio Stuff. Today I want to take a look at this weather station supplied to me by Radioddity. This is the Raddy Weather Station WF100C. Let's take a look at what we got. Guys, if you want to pick one of these up, I will leave a link in the description. I will also leave a code to get $15 off any purchases over $65 at Radioddity. So be sure to use that as well. Okay, so let's take a look at what we get. This is what they're calling the integrated sensor. This has a rain gauge. It's got a UV sensor here. It's got a little bubble level, so you know it's level. It's got your wind uh, anemometer. And this is a thermo hygrometer. And it's got your wind vane there for uh, weather direction. Got some mounting hardware, so you can mount this either flat, like on a roof. Stick this pipe in there. Set the sensor on top or you can mount it on a pipe, which is what I'm gonna do, and uh, mount it vertically like that. And it comes with all the nuts and bolts and stuff that you need. This is the outdoor temperature sensor. They're calling this an outdoor uh, thermo hygrometer sensor. So we'll hang this outside somewhere. And you get this nice display that is either powered off of batteries or there's also a plug to connect this to the wall. So if you feel like taking this with you, you can unplug this from the wall. You're not going to lose all your data and you'll still have uh, everything powered up on the screen. So that's nice. And it also comes with this very nicely written user manual to tell you how the heck to connect all this. Connects over Wi-Fi. And this will also connect to weathercloud.net. I believe that is a way of uploading your weather to uh, a larger weather database to share your findings. So that's pretty cool. Now before I climb on my roof and put all this up, I want to set everything up and make sure it all works first. So I have to start by installing some batteries. This sensor takes two double A's, everything else takes triple A's. Now it says to use lithium ion, I'm using just rechargeable Duracells because that's what I have. Okay, that was very simple. Do make sure you have both of these turned on before you turn the screen on, otherwise it won't scan for all of your devices and you'll have to unplug it, remove the battery, and it'll rescan. But um, everything's ready to go, so now I'm going to mount this to a fiberglass pole and we're going to stick it on my antenna mast outside on the roof and we'll hop up there. But let me get this mounted first. We're ready to rock and roll. All right, welcome to my rooftop, <laughs> my least favorite place in the world. Not a big fan of heights, but it's definitely an antenna farm up here. So all we have to do now, because we're using these military fiberglass masks, I'm just going to slide this over the next section. And we are installed. Only one other thing we got to do. We want to make sure that the back end of this, the solar panel is facing south, which my house pretty much is north and south oriented anyway. I'm gonna say that's pretty good there. I'm installing my extra sensor under the eaves of my porch because it gets really hot in my porch in the summer. And the great thing about this extra sensor, and you can purchase extra ones, if you've got different rooms, say you have a front porch, maybe a sunroom, a Florida room, some people call them, you can set these different sensors in those different areas and you'll know all the different temperatures of your house as well as the temperature uh, from the weather vane that you have. And I've only been in here a few seconds and this is already 83 up here where it's about 79 just outside of this uh, porch. Now that our sensor is installed, I want to connect this to Wi-Fi so this will sync the date and time over the internet. So we're simply going to plug it in, let everything boot up real quick. And then we're going to push this min max button here for three seconds and that Wi-Fi icon should start to blink as it is. So now we can hop onto our computer. We're going to search our network for this weather home and we're going to select that. So now I'm connected to weather home. The, the screen has created a wireless access point. And from there, we're going to hop over to a browser and we're going to type in 192.168.5.1 and hit enter. So now this is all we need to do to tell 
the weather station, what we're at now. My Wi-Fi is hidden, so I had to type in Apple. I just that's just what I call it, and then we can type in our password. And if you want to set up Weather Underground, uh, you can do that here, and also WeatherCloud.net, so you can log in online uh, to Weather Underground and see your weather station from anywhere in the world. And this WeatherCloud.net will actually allow the weather station to upload your weather to the WeatherCloud site, so everyone can uh, share the weather. And you can set your time zone. I'm in central time zone. And here you can pick a couple different uh, servers to get the time. This is the one by default. So I'm going to hit that. We're going to hit save. That's it. And then just make sure you go back to your regular Wi-Fi on your computer. And you are good to go. Now let's take a walk around the screen and see all the different information that this weather station is going to give us. Obviously, first... At the very top, we have our outdoor temperature. This is coming directly from our weather vane uh, above the roof. Here's our rainfall. It hasn't rained here, thankfully, so zero rain. We've got our indoor temperature. That's the sensor that's inside this screen with a relative humidity. It's a nice day, so all the windows are open. Now, we can also see that our Wi-Fi is connected, and that has synced with the UTC servers over the Internet. We've also got our UV index with the sunlight and a lot, all of these are configurable. We'll get to that in a minute. So we can change this uh, sunlight to show different settings as well as we can change the date and the time format and all that uh, and a lot of other things. Here's the sensor. So notice it's 82.9 degrees on my front porch, but it's 77.6 degrees above the house. So definitely gets a bit warmer on the porch. Here we have our barometer and then we have our anemometer and this shows the real time and it averages throughout the day. We can also see the direction that it's coming from. So we're coming a little bit out of the Southwest today. Just a nice gentle breeze. Then we have this kind of weather forecast, if you will. Now, from my understanding, from reading the instructions of this, this is basically gonna kind of predict the, the uh, forecast based off of the history of your barometer. I don't believe this is actually pulling weather data from the internet uh, like some other stations do. Then we have our dew point and our feels like temperature as well as our dew point down here as well. Taking a look at the side of the screen, we've got a few buttons that are kind of multi buttons that we're gonna get to in just a second. And that's about it. On the other side, we have our input for our DC. On the back, we've got a nice uh, stand for easy viewing, keep it propped up like that. And then this is our battery compartment that houses three AAA batteries. And there's also three holes for wall mounting as well. Now let's get into some of the functions that our display can tell us. Now on the bottom right here is this max min button. Now if we simply press that, that's gonna cycle between the maximum and minimum readings that our weather station has sent to the display. At a very quick glance, you can see, like, for example, what was the maximum wind, what was the minimum wind, same thing with your rainfall, your sensor, all that stuff. Now, there's a lot of ways we can configure our readout simply by pressing the set mode button. So we're going to watch down here at the time. The first time we press this, this is going to cycle through here. So that set mode button is what's going to change the different areas that we're going to set, and then the max min button on the bottom here is going to allow us to toggle. So right now, uh, I prefer this on the day and the date, but if we want, we can change this to now that's cycling through the seconds and then we have our date or we have just the day and then the year. And anytime you want to get out of here, if you hit the snooze button, that will basically enter your settings. Now, if we press this set mode button again, we're back into the time, but if we click it again, now we've got our indoor temperature. And again, by pressing the max min button, this is gonna to toggle between your dew point and the temperature indoors. If we press it again, now it's on our rainfall gauge. And again, press the max min. So I have this in inches per hour. Here's the total rainfall. You can go to the month, you can go to the week, or you can go back to 24 hours. Next, we have the outdoor dew point, and this is going to change between your outdoor dew point or the apparent temperature outside. 
if we cycle this again, we can change our average wind speed from 10 minutes to two minutes to 24 hours. Press the mode button again. Now we're on our pressure. We can change it between uh, relative, which is what it's on right now, and absolute pressure. And toggling it again, we're gonna be on our sensor dew point index, which will toggle this between the heat index and the dew point. Actually, I think I'm gonna leave that on heat index and then hitting it again. Those are all the different settings that you can configure for the screen. Now, if we wanna dive deeper into how we can program this interface, we can actually long press this setting button on the side for a few seconds. Now, we're gonna get all kinds of menus. So this first one is to set the default time sync on. Now, we're hooked up to Wi-Fi, so I'm not gonna mess with any of the time, but if we wanna set this off, we can just simply press the max min button or we can set the channel button up top. Uh, but I'm going to leave that on and then we can cycle through by simply hitting the menu button. So if I want to change from 12 hour to 24 hour time, I can do that. If I want to manually adjust the time, I can do that. The hour, the minute, the month, day, everything can be done manually. Now we have this 24 hour clears. Now what does that mean? This is the max min uh, of all your readings for a 24 hour period. If you leave that on at midnight, it's gonna clear all the minimum and maximum readings. If you wanna do it manually, you simply turn that off and uh, you would have to adjust it manually. Hit it again, we can cycle between Fahrenheit and Celsius. Hit it again, we can change our wind from miles per hour to kilometers per hour to meters per second, feet per second, uh, not sure what BFT is, and you also have your knots. And down here under rain, we can change it from inches to millimeters. Now here under pressure, we can change some settings. I'm not really too learned on what all of these pressure settings are, but it looks like it says uh, INHG, HPA, and MMHG. Uh, you'll have to tell me what all that means, but <laughs> those of you that are into pressure, can uh, tell me what that means. And then we press the menu button and we get a two, so we can change this. Maybe that's millibars. I'm not too familiar on that, but I think it, the default is two, so I'm just gonna leave it on that. Then we can set the default weather icon. I'm gonna change it to uh, sunny, just like that as the default. Then we have our sunlight and we can change this uh, to, again, not too learned in what uh, the sunlight stuff is, but we have W slash uh, M squared, whatever that means. And then we have our Lux, and then we have FC, because there's a light sensor on top of it, so we can cycle between these two. Uh, I'll leave it on Lux, what the heck, how bright is it? I think that's a brightness. And uh, that's it. Another thing I want to point out, if we look right here, this says channel one. Now this is related to the sensor that's on my front porch. If I had more sensors hooked up, this channel button on the side, if we hit that, that would cycle between the different sensors. So you would be able to look at, you know, say your back porch versus your front porch. You can see what temperatures are all over your house where you have those things. And there's also a setting that would just allow it to scroll through all the different sensors if you have multiple sensors as well. Now another feature about this display that I think is really neat is its ability to set different alarms. So on the side here, we've got this alarm button. Now if we press that, that's gonna bring us into alarm mode. And this is all the settings right now just default. So I'm gonna long press the set mode button and that's gonna bring us to the first bit of alarms, which is simply an alarm clock. If I wanna turn this on, I'm gonna hit the alarm button. Say I wanna wake up at 7 a.m., that alarm is on. You can see that just went on. Now it's off. If we hit the set mode button, we can change the minutes. Set it again, here's a second alarm. Again, we can toggle that on and off. Hit the set mode button again. Now here's where it gets interesting. So maybe we wanna have an alarm if it gets too hot. We can hit the plus or minus buttons and by long pressing this, it goes a lot faster. So maybe I wanna know when it reaches 98 degrees. Hit the alarm button. Now you can see that little bell is on. So we're gonna be notified 
uh, if it's 98 degrees. And to show you what that sounds like, let's drop this temperature down below 77. Turn that alarm on, hit the snooze to get out of here. Now we can hear that beeping. It's letting us know that it dropped below our alarm temperature. And we can just hit any button to turn that off. We can also set whatever low temperature we want. If it gets below, you know, whatever temperature you set, it'll set an alarm. The humidity, everything, everything has an alarm. Relative temperature, high and low, dew point, all that. Another important one, the wind gust. You know, maybe if it gets above a certain uh, wind speed, maybe you've got antenna towers out in the yard for your ham radios, you know, maybe it's time to take some of those down if it gets too windy, you can set an alarm for that. Rainfall rate, you know, maybe uh, get the toys in if it's gonna flood, you don't have everything flowing down the street there. The pressure, alarms, you can set alarms for everything on this. Inside temperature, if it gets, you know, below whatever, you know, like we had a big freeze in Texas in February, if this gets below a certain temperature, you know, all your pipes are gonna freeze, so that'd be a good alarm to have. So, really, really cool. Heat index, sunlight, everything. Outdoor temperature, everything. So that's just really cool that you can set all of these different configurations to have an alarm for. And then you just hit the snooze button to get out of there. So there we have it. A look at the Ratty WF100C wireless weather station from Radioddity. I am really impressed with this. It's definitely an upgrade from the current weather station that I have. I definitely like all the features, especially the barometer. It's nice to have. My other one was lacking that. The alarms are a really cool thing to have as well. Uh, and I really like the two different sensors that it comes with, as well as the expandability to add more sensors for other rooms. So definitely two thumbs up from me. And if you haven't already, do hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up and share. That way other folks get to see this great content. And if you want to support the channel, you can become a Patreon at patreon.com slash KMRD Radio Stuff. Until then, guys, we'll see you again on another episode of KMRD Radio Stuff 73.